Hello everyone, Cody Williams, Inside Sales Engineer for Grunfoss. Today I'm going to be showing you how to start up a Hydro MPC system for HVAC related application. When you're first arriving on site, you want to make sure you have the correct power, so the correct phase and voltage ran to the system. The system is filled with uh, water glycol. The connections are made to the suction and discharge. Once all of those are checked, you want to come over to the pumps and vent each one. So this front plunger, if you rotate this back out, you can go to each pump one by one and vent them. If you look here, this is exactly what our uh, vent looks like. So if you rotate this, it pulls out a plunger and then allows air and water to escape out of here. So what you wanna do is make sure that there's water up to the mechanical seal. Um, since this is gonna be a closed loop application, you wanna make sure if needed, the water makeup is turned on and ready to go. And then also the air separator that the top vent is open. So any of that entrapped air can make its way out of the system. After you have checked the system and vented the pumps, the next thing you want to do is come to the CU-52 controller and follow our step-by-step -step guide. The first step is selecting the language in which you'd like the system report in. So for this, we've checked English US, and from here we go to the next page. You can pick any of these languages on the list, but for ours, we're going to pick English US. This next step is a welcome page, and it shows you exactly what all the buttons mean and how to operate the system. For our controller, anything with the underglow is a button that you could click on, and this back arrow brings you to the previous page at any time. The next step is picking the format that you'd like the date and time shown in. So here's the different formats, and then the first day of the week, either Sunday or Monday. You can toggle down, click these by hitting OK, and then toggle back up to go to the next page. For this page, you're actually setting up the date, so you need to pick the month, year and day in which you like this formatted in. So from here, you can change the dates by hitting the plus and minus arrows and then hitting OK. And follow the arrows up to go to the next page. And the same step regarding the time. So you want to set this up based on the current time of the system. Our next step is to pick the units in which the system will report in. For ours, we're going to pick Imperial units, but you also have the option for SI units. Once you've selected the units you'd like, you just hit from the top, go to the next page. The next step is picking the application in which the system will be operating in. So for our system, we're going to pick air conditioning pumps on the cold side. So this would be flowing away from a chiller. Note, you could pick on pumps on the hot side or cold side for heating and cooling. So this would be to or from a chiller or to or from a boiler. Once you have the application, you can go to the next page. Since our system will be for HVAC, we're going to pick differential pressure pump. This will allow us to use the two transducers on the suction and discharge for a differential pressure. Once you have this selected, you just go to the next page. From here, you select the type of transducer. So for this, you just need to verify the information by looking at the transducer and verifying it right here on the screen. So four to 20 milliamps, as well as the range of the uh, transducer. Once these have been verified, you can proceed to the next page. The next option is regarding the pump data. So this is all preloaded from the factory so these do not need to be adjusted, but you have the option if you'd like. From here, you can just follow on to the next page. This is actually setting up the differential pressure in which you'd like the system to maintain. So for our system, we preset up based on 25 PSI, but if you hit the arrow down and come to set point, you can hit plus or minus to change that set point. So once we are happy with that set point of 25 PSI, we can say okay, and then go back to the uh, top of the screen and go to the next page. So we've already done the priming of the pumps. This is another step to make sure that they're completely vented. And what this will do is actually operate the pump. So a good thing to note that vent that we've shown previously to make that finger tight and to have someone near the pump. Also, these pumps will run at full speed. So you may need to close the discharge valve just a little bit so you don't have the full system pressure. So from here, we're gonna start the pump. And this is a good time to get any air out of the system so from here, you hit OK, start the pump, and again, to stop the pump. And you repeat this one by one 
until all the pumps have been vented and primed. Note, there's also the option to check rotation. For our MLE motors, the rotation is not needed to be checked because they auto-rotate. And the final step in the startup guide is to actually start up the system and go to the main page. For ours, we're actually gonna start in stop mode. You have the option of starting in normal, which will maintain the differential, or starting in stop mode, which will not allow the system to maintain the differential. I'm gonna start ours in stop mode because there's a few other settings I'd like to show you. One option you have to help protect the system from dry running is to use a low limit exceed. So for this, you can go over to settings, monitoring functions, limit one exceeded. And for this, we're gonna set it up based on the differential pressure pump low. So the input value to be monitored, you wanna select differential pressure pump low. And since this is gonna be monitoring low pressure, you wanna say min limit as the type of uh, option it's monitoring. For the warning, I'm gonna set ours up based on five PSI. So warning limit is five, and this is gonna be an auto reset. So this will just notify you when the pressure is low, but it will not stop the system. So this option is enabled. Next is the actual alarm to stop the system. You'd want this to help protect the pumps if there's ever a situation where there's no pressure in the line. So I have our setup for alarm limit zero, which is zero uh, pressure on the line. And this is a manual reset. So someone has to come and make sure the system has pressure before it can be reset. And overall, all you do is come up to the top once those are set up and say enable. Some engineers may require that a zero to 10 or four to 20 signal is sent to the controller to maintain set point. Um, to do this, you can actually do the set point influence. So to do this, you go over settings, primary controller, external set point influence. And what this is doing is whatever set point you have programmed in the controller, the zero to 10 or four to 20 is actually enabled um, to adjust that up and down based on system requirements. You can also do this through BACnet, but this is uh, based on sending an analog input. So to get started, you want to pick your analog input. So from here, we're going to pick analog input three. For, for ours, it's going to be a zero to 10 volt system. And the input value to be measured is going to be from zero to 100% signal. And once you set up that analog input, you now want to say which item are you selecting. So I'm going to say zero to 100 percent signal is what I'm going to be using. Now I'm setting the influence function. So this is what, um, how the system will operate using this function. So right now I'm going to have two points. You can have up to eight, but for this uh, example, I'm going to use two. So zero percent based on zero volts, is gonna give you zero point, uh, set point. Now if I go up to 100, and then again 100, This now gives me full range of the set point. One thing to note for the minimum set point, you may wanna set this up based on the minimum flow requirement through a chiller, and you'd measure that based on the uh, flow meters if installed on the system, and then the di minimum differential required to meet that set point. So now that this is set up, I'm gonna enable this function. And from the home screen, you can see that the set point is 25 PSI, and if I go to electrical overview down at the bottom, analog inputs, I'm at 100%, which is 10 volts. Now, if I change this back down to five volts, you can see here on our analog input three, I'm now showing five volts and 50% of the set point. So now if I go back to the home screen, 
that 25 PSI has now been cut in half. And if I follow that even down further, going down to zero, you can see that this goes down to close to zero set point. This may be required depending on if the engineer wants to send it a, um, a four to 20 or zero to 10 input to influence a set point. One of the also the nice things about this is you can also tie this to a uh, temperature transmitter. So say if it's a hot sunny day, you can influence the set point, increase it or decrease it based on system requirements. A nice redundancy option when feeding to a boiler or chiller is to set up a user fine speed that the pumps will operate at if the controller ever loses communication. Although highly unlikely, this is just a nice redundancy feature that we offer. So what I've done here is pulled out the communication to the controller and what I'll do next is set up the minimum speed for the pumps. As you can see here, I've already set up the user defined speed for the first two pumps. And the last pump is still running at minimum. This is typically what will happen based on a standard skid system. So what I'm gonna do is reset up the user defined speed. So to do this, I'm gonna use a Go Remote in our app. You connect to it. And operating mode, instead of minimum, you're gonna pick user defined speed. And then within settings, you're gonna select user defined speed. So I'm gonna pick 55% speed. And as you can see, all pumps are running at 55% speed. One way to make our Hydro MPC system more efficient using the C52 controller is to set it up in proportional pressure. So during low flow situations, you, not, you do not have that high pressure demand. So to do this, you come over to settings, primary controller, and then make your way down to uh, proportional pressure. So I click on this. So for proportional pressure, we have two options, linear or squared. Um, squared mimics the uh, system curve just a little bit better, but in certain circumstances, you may need linear. So set point influence at zero flow. We're gonna try to set this up based on the minimum uh, flow through a boiler or chiller. So you're maintaining that minimum uh, requirement of the system. And then for Q max, you may set this up based on system design conditions or um, the BEP point of the uh, boiler or chiller. Once you have these set up, you come up to the top and enable this function. So for this um, proportional pressure, you're decreasing the pressure during low flow and increasing the pressure during high flow. This is a nice way to save on overall efficiency of the system. As you can see, based on the proportional pressure, it's dropped to 7.5. And now our final step is just go over operation. Instead of stop mode, we'll put it back to normal. And as you can see, the pumps will uh, start up and I'll maintain the proportional pressure. I hope you like this video for starting up a Hydro MPC for HVAC as well as some tips and tricks and thank you for your time.